Good to see you today. We're a little thin at this moment, but I believe the Lord will fill in the gaps. Glad you're here today. Thank you for worshiping with us. It's a good day. It's the day the Lord has made, and we're going to choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. I'm looking forward to our time together. Thankful for our worship team. You'll uh, notice that uh, the Smith family is uh, not with us today, but our team is prepared, and they are ready to go, and Jesus is ready for us to worship. Amen? He is ready. He's in the house. And so uh, we're just going to take time this morning to make much of Jesus. So I'm going to ask you to stand with me if you would. <clears throat> Let us invite his presence today. Father God, we are blessed. We are grateful, Father God, for your faithfulness. And God, even in the midst of uh, a national tragedy yesterday, Father God, we still choose to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Father God, we know that we live in a shaky world. And God, we thank you that you are faithful. We thank you, God, that uh, former President Trump was, was not killed in that assassination attempt. God, we thank you for your grace upon his life. We pray for those uh, that lost a loved one yesterday, people that were injured. God, we invite you into all of that. Father, our job as the body of Christ is to pray, and we speak the name of Jesus over all that took place in Pennsylvania. We pray, God, for President Trump, that you would sustain him and heal him and his family. Grant them grace, body, soul, and spirit, Father God. May they be renewed and may life flow into them, Father God. And we just prayed this morning, God, over the whole political process. God, we invite you in, Father. We pray that there would be a free and a fair election, that everything building up in the coming weeks, God, that there would just be a supernatural presence, God, over our nation. Father, we are praying for your kingdom to come. God, for your will to be done in America, Father God, as it is in heaven. So we invite you in, God, and we entrust this into your capable hands. And God, we thank you again for your grace yesterday. Father, now today, as we just turn our attention to worship, Jesus, we thank you that you are high and lifted up, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, we thank you that we can worship you with abandon today. And so today, God, we just throw off all restraints and we enter into the glory of your presence. And Jesus, we worship you and we exalt your holy name. So Holy Spirit, come and just turn us into worshipers today. Let there be a freedom in this house as we bring glory to your name. We pray it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Church, let us turn from prayer to praising God, lifting him up with song and praise. Our first song is I Thank God, and it's so appropriate because we've changed as followers of Jesus. We've been made new. As the Apostle Paul said, wherefore, if any man is in Christ, he's the old has passed away, and we've been made new. So let's thank him.
worship you this morning. Lord, we lift our voices. We lift our hearts to you. Lord, we're not going to let distractions. We're not going to let fears. God, we're not going to let anything keep us from drawing near to you. And Jesus, we just lift our hands and our voices today. You are worthy. You are absolutely glorious, Jesus. And we love you. Lord, we love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Jesus, we thank you for this glorious gospel that has saved us. We thank you, God, for your powerful peace and presence. Lord, we need, we need you, Lord. And we just invite you to come and flow through every heart. Jesus, we long for you. God, we're hungry for a greater revelation of who you are and what you want to do in us and through us today. Lord, we just, we offer ourselves, we, we lay ourselves out before you, Jesus. We are your instruments. Lord, let your glory be revealed in us and through us. Whether a word today, a testimony, Father God, whatever you've put upon our hearts to bring to the table this morning, Jesus, we just want you to be honored and glorified in this place. Oh, God, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Sweep over our souls today, Jesus. Sweep over our souls today, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Lord. Fill us afresh. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Spirit of the living God. Come. Jesus, we seek your face today. servants are listening. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you've got a word from the Lord, we're, we're ready to give you a microphone so all of our Facebook folks can, can uh, overhear Alan. So all of our Facebook folks can hear what's going on. Brother Trey. I just feel like the Lord is saying, fear not, because I have not given you a spirit of fear, but I have a power, love, and a sound mind. And in this time, I feel like the Lord is saying that I need you to demonstrate my power, to demonstrate my love, and to demonstrate my sound mind, the mind of Christ in the earth in this time of tragedy as times grow darker. So have strength, demonstrate his love, demonstrate yes. his power in the earth because that's what he's called us to do in this time, in Jesus' name. Amen, yes, yes, yes. Let's just, let's just praise the Lord, yeah, go ahead, Christy. I just keep hearing I am here in my head and just, I just keep hearing, I am here. Yes, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, you are here. Yes, yes, let's just, let's just worship here right now. Jesus, we don't, we don't want to pick up a spirit of fear today, God. We don't want to have something that's going to distract us from the sound mind. Jesus, you are here today to bolster your people. Father God, if ever there's a, a, a day that, your people need to be salt and light. Father God, this is it. We can season and lighten this world, God. We can bring the fragrance of Christ to bear in every place. God, while there's anger and fear and confusion going on in our world today, God, we remind ourselves of what you said in your word. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are greater than any trouble greater than any conspiracy or plot, that Jesus, nothing thwarts your will for this nation. Father God, we stand in agreement with your word. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And we stand upon that today. 
we enforce that victory today for America. God, we thank you that you have a plan for this nation for good, to support the nation of Israel, to stand against tyranny, and to take the gospel around the world. And God, we lock on to that mission today, and we resist you, devil, in Jesus' name. You will not distract this nation from its God-ordained missions. And we thank you, Father God, for the power of your Holy Spirit in your church to radiate strength and confidence and boldness, Father God. We will not shrink back, but we will stand on the promises. Amen, church? Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We thank you, Father God, for the victory that is ours. God, we thank you that you've called us for such a time as this. God, we stand in agreement with your word that your grace is sufficient for us, that God, even in our weaknesses, God, your strength is made perfect. So bear us up, O oh God. We glory in our infirmities that the power of God might rest upon us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody else, you've got a word. Yes, over here, Karen. I'm going to the uh, Bible study on Wednesday nights, and we've been talking about prayer. And I just had a feeling in my heart that God was telling me to go forth and in agreement with the ladies there at the Bible study that we were to pray for my healing from diabetes. We prayed and I'm believing in the faith, with my faith, that Jesus Christ is the same today as he was yesterday and he, his word says, ask, believe and receive. Yes. I believe. Yes that when we prayed, that diabetes dried up yes. and died. Yes, in Jesus' And I'm thanking God every day, every time the devil tries to tell me different, I just tell him to get away from me and leave me alone. The word is true and he is a liar. Yes. And I just want everybody to know that I am believing by faith that diabetes is gone in Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes. yes, Lord. We stand in agreement with Karen and all those that have prayed that God, the prayer of faith, heals the sick. And we just, we just thank you, God, for your divine intervention and Karen's bold testimony today that in Jesus' name, she is healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody else, Deb? You want to give us an update on Kenny, and we want to pray for him. We, we get, let, me, let me get the mic to you. We want to pray for Kenny. He's in the hospital. Okay, he called me at 2.30 this morning. He was still kind of under the um, effects of anesthesia. So his... Oh, what word am I looking for? Um... He thought everybody was after him, basically. <laughs> so I talked to him, and at least his voice wasn't full of pain at that time. They did a procedure so that the remaining kidney stones could pass without giving him a lot of pain. Um, this morning, he called me at about 8 o'clock and told me that he felt better. So praise God, things are going in the right direction. Uh, he, he's stable. All of his vitals look good. They're not even, right now, even considering looking at the heart and going for maybe a heart cath until this kidney issue gets resolved. Um, I guess his kidney is still bleeding a little bit. But um, praise God, I, I prayed last night. All of you have prayed, and I thank you for that very much. But uh, I think we're going in the right direction. I think God is hearing because this morning his voice was stronger. He was sitting up in a recliner and he was not in any pain, except he wants to come home. The frustrating part is he's three hours from me at Missouri Baptist. 
So I just can't run up there on a minute's notice and he's telling me, don't come, don't come, don't come. But they did say that his, his heart was good right now. So everything's looking good. Thank you guys for All your right. prayers. All right, amen, amen. Hey, some of you gather around Deb right there and let's lay hands on her and let's pray. Father God, we just come before your glorious throne. And God, although Ken's three hours from us in the spirit realm, he's right here. And in Jesus' name, we speak to this kidney. Stop bleeding in Jesus' name. We speak to his heart muscle. Muscle be healed in Jesus' name. Heart function as God ordained it in Jesus' name. And we speak that peace and presence of God to fill that hospital room, to fill Deb right now. God, we thank you for Kenny's healing, the restoration, the good testimony, God. We thank you that the prayer of faith still heals the sick. And so we just speak the name of Jesus over Ken Eller. And we thank you, God, for restoring him for your glory and filling him with your peace and giving Deb that same peace. We pray it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, hey, this, is, this is good stuff. Somebody else got a testimony, a word you want to share? Holy Spirit, have your way. Anybody else, just lift a hand. Alan's got the mic. This week, um, the words from the, the song, Good, Good Father, and especially the, the lyrics that go, oh, it's love so undeniable, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable, I can hardly think. But then the next one is as I call, as you call me deeper still. And that's three times in there, as you call me deeper. And it just, resonated in my heart, you know, that God wants us to be in a deeper relationship with Him. And our relationship with Him needs to be so that we would know Him. Yes. Not just for what He does for us or our own personal development, but we need to be completely surrendered to Him. Oswald Chambers has a quote, my goal is God himself, not joy, nor peace, nor even blessing, but God himself, my God. We all want joy, peace, and blessings, but knowing God needs to be above those attributes. And he goes on to say that your priorities must be God first, God second, and God third, until your life is continually face to face with God and no one else is taken into account whatsoever. It's God alone. And it's a challenge that I have to ask myself. You know, I, I want him to heal me for miracles and, and what he does for us and is moving on our behalf, but do I want him and do I want to know him? Do I really know him as a good, good father? It's just a challenge for me. Amen. Amen. God alone, thank you, Father. God, you're enough. You are enough. Thank you, Lord. God, may that be our heart's cry, to desire you with all that is within us. Well, Father God, now as we receive our tithes and our offerings this morning, God, we just want to bring to you the, the fruits of our labors, God, the, uh, the tithe as well as offerings. It's Mission Sunday today, Father God, so we bring our missions offerings as well. God, we're mindful that uh, there's people that are an extension of our church that are serving in far-flung corners of the United States and around the world. We thank you for them, God. We thank you for their hearts. We thank you, God, for their, their willingness to get out of their comfort zone and go to places that... Many people would not go. And Jesus, we just thank you for the various missionaries that we support. And Father God, we pray today that as we receive this offering, 
that God, that our, our missionaries would just know that folks back home are praying for them, God. We lift them up to you, God. We think of, of Andrea. We think of the Woolies and the Snyders and Jay Covert, Father God. We think of the Sutherlands. And, Father, we think of the Jacintos. Father God, we, uh, we think of Jesus is the way and the Pregnancy Resource Center. And God, I, I know I missed several in there, but Jesus, you know, you know the needs of our missionaries. And we just pray that today, that God, that they would be refreshed and renewed and filled with your spirit and encouraged, Father God, in their work. God, may they see a good return. And Father, we just pray that they would know that they are loved by the folks back home. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for those that uh, stepped up and shared a word today. That was, that was good. You know, we're all supposed to be bringing something to the table, right? Uh, and it may not be something that's publicly done in a service. It may be a conversation before church. It may be something you do after church. It could be something that goes on in the week. But you're gifted, amen? <clears throat> you're gifted, amen? amen? This is a gifted bunch, supernatural people filled with the Holy Spirit of God with tremendous potential. Amen? Let it flow. All right, we pray. Worship team's going to lead us. Bring your gifts.
Now, as I was sitting here and getting ready to come up, I felt like the Lord just nudged me a little bit and said, there was somebody here that you felt like God wanted you to say something this morning, and you didn't say it, and the moment passed, and I'm just here to say, the moment is not passed. If, if Mary Lou, okay, we need a microphone here for Mary Lou. Uh, Brian, if you can help us out with that, please. You know, sometimes we think, oh, there wasn't time, or I didn't get opportunity, but uh, here we go, Mary Lou, whatever God's put on your heart there. My voice is very raspy this morning. I apologize for that. When Jesus walked on this earth, he was the light. As long as he was here, he was the light. The apostles followed him, he and those that loved him. He was the light, but when he went to heaven, he went back to heaven. His light left the world. But those that love him and the apostles and all of us, we are the reflectors of his light on this earth for him. And he told us to go out into all the world and be missionaries, which we're thankful for all the missionaries that go all over the world and do things that... Mm -hmm. We think we can or don't want to do, but our mission here is to be a missionary to reflect Jesus' light. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary Lou. You know, if you, you want to study something that's, that's fascinating, light is an incredible, incredible topic. You know, there, there really is no such thing as color. Like this looks like this is a green shirt. But it's not really green. It is a fabric that reflects green light. And that's why this shirt looks green because it is a reflection of green light. I mean, you think, oh, that's crazy, Pastor. That's a green shirt. I'm not. But it only appears green because it's reflecting the light, if, if there was no light, you know what color the shirt would be? It would be black, right? It would be black. There would be nothing. But, but when there is light, it reflects green. And uh, I just, exactly what Mary Lou said, you know, we are the reflection of God's light in this world. We don't have the light. We're not the light, but we reflect the light of Jesus. Just as surely as this shirt reflects green, uh, and people are saying the pastor's crazy. He doesn't even know what color shirt he has on. Mary Ann's going to have to dress him in the morning. Um, but you study up on light. And, I mean, when it talks about Jesus being the light of the world, that is a huge statement because of what light does. So, good word, Mary Lou. Thank you for sharing that. Um, next Sunday is going to be a big Sunday. And there's, there's several reasons. One, we've got a missionary, uh, Tyler Halstead. He is a young man uh, going to uh, a sensitive country. Since we're on Facebook, I won't say the country, but it's a, a sensitive country. And uh, you're going to enjoy hearing uh, from Tyler. And uh, then we will, uh, we will move downstairs. We'll have our fellowship meal. But it is also our Sunday for our Elevate Youth uh, they are doing a fundraiser uh, to help them get to the, uh, the winter jam, the winter conference that they go to every year. And so uh, Tara's asked me to mention just a couple things to you. Uh, there is an extensive note because you say, I can't remember all this. There's a note in the bulletin, the e-bulletin. If you didn't get one, there's a paper copy that you can pick up on the other side of the wall there. And if you'd like to get one emailed to you, uh, I need your email address, and I'll add you to the church list. Uh, so there's going to be an auction, and Tara says she's still looking for some donations, uh, baked items or a handmade item, some item perhaps that you have canned. Uh, these would all be a part of the auction, or any service that you would like to render that we could auction off. Uh, so if you, you know, I don't know. I don't know what that would be. I'm trying to think of a good example. I know one year... I offered uh, some computer work uh, for somebody, and that was auctioned off. I know uh, Paula Belaski auctioned off 
uh, a photo shoot and our family bought that and, and got some really nice photos. So, you know, you can be creative with this, but you need to let Tara know um, what you would like to contribute. So uh, that's going to be a, a big day next week with our missionary, our fellowship meal, and then in conjunction with the meal, we're going to, to be doing some fundraising for our youth group. Um, on that matter, we do not have our youth Sunday school class today. Tara is out. So uh, at this point, we will release all of our uh, below junior high students now to their class. So thank you, teachers, for your service there. All right, well, um, the passage that I'm going to preach on is so familiar today, I almost feel like we could just like have a roundtable discussion about it. Um, so we, we'll, see, we'll see how this goes. The Holy Spirit may be leading us to, uh, uh, to take a look at this maybe in a little different way this morning, but the title of the message is Living in the Favor and Blessings of God. How many of you would like to live there in the favor and the blessings of God? You know, just to always be aware of God and his peace, his presence, to see God work things out. Have you ever had a time in your life, I hope you say yes, where you've just felt like you've been on a God roll? Where God just did one thing and then another thing and another thing and it's just like, man, I just feel God. Those are great times to live in, aren't they? You just see God, you see God, you see God. You know, and I know reflecting on my life, a lot of times those things happen when I am going through a challenge, when I really need God to show up. And, and, and that is such a cool time to have God show up. Now, we also are probably aware of those times when God seems a little bit far off. And you wake up in the night, and I'm sure nobody here does this, but you start thinking about stuff. How many of you got stuff to think about? Yeah, we got stuff to think about. Now, now we know we're not supposed to worry, so we're not worrying, but we're just thinking about stuff, right? And... And, and we, we understand that, and we know better, right? We know that we can't just, like, change the words and get away with it, that we know that, man, I really want those times when I'm just kind of rolling in the favor and blessings of God. I don't want to just be, like, thinking about stuff and, uh, and getting anxious. And so uh, I want to speak to that. Uh, today because I know it would be wonderful if becoming a Christian just eliminated all of your worries. Wouldn't it be great just becoming a Christian, all of your worries just drop off and whew, done with that. But that's not the way it goes. In fact, I think becoming a Christian, if you tend to be a worrier, it can actually add to your worries because now it's like, Boy, I sure hope I'm doing this the way God wants me to, right? Uh, I, I hope I'm praying the way I should. I, I'm worried that God's disappointed in me. And so being a Christian can add a, a whole nother level to thinking about stuff. So, you know, how, how do we get to that place where, you know, we can do what Jesus said? Matthew 6, 25 is a, is a verse. It's short powerful. Jesus says, do not worry about your life. Whew. Hey, how many things in your life does that include? All things, doesn't it? Do not worry about your life. And of course, he goes on what you should eat, what you should drink, what you should wear. And, you know, I, I think, well, I don't typically worry about those things too much. But, you know, if I didn't have one of those, I would be pretty worried. And if I didn't have anything to be wearing, you should be worried too. Um, you know, the color of my shirt would be the least of the problems. Um, so I don't tend to worry about those things, but, but I, I worry about other things, you know. And, man, that, it, it's, it's just really natural to worry, isn't it? And yet, I know Jesus says, don't do it. 
And, and when he says, don't worry about your life, that pretty much means there's nothing that you are legitimately supposed to be worried about. Now, there is one exception to that, and I will talk about that at the very end. But as followers of Jesus, we know that worrying is a significant problem. I used to think back when my mom was living that uh, mom worried enough for about three people, and so I didn't really need to worry. You know, I mean, mom was, uh, she, she was almost a pro at times, and uh, I love her to pieces, but uh, she, she did have a knack for getting uptight about stuff. So, um, but I fight the same tendency. So we're not just going to say, okay, everybody that's ever worried, get to the altar now. We could have a really short service. We'd all be up here, right? We'd all be praying, and then, then we'd be worried that we're going to worry again. And then, and, you know, right? I mean, it's a, it's a vicious cycle. But this, uh, this passage that I'm going to share with you and talk a little bit about, and we might talk about together, is uh, very well known. It's Proverbs chapter 3. Verses 5 and 6. Now, this is out of the book of Proverbs. This is Solomon. And um, let, me, let me just read the preface. Let me read the first three verses, and then Steve will put verses 4 and 5 on the screen. Solomon, talking to his, his progeny, he says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. For they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. That sounds like the blessing and favor of God, doesn't it? To have your life prolonged and to have prosperity. He says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Now, I'd like to have favor uh, and, and a good name in the sight of God and man. How about you? Right? I mean, that's the bottom line in life. I want to please God. That's, that's the, the whole deal, isn't it? For God to be pleased with my life. So how do we do that? Verse 5. Very simple. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Okay, y'all just go out and do that. Let's, let's just pray. <laughs> I mean, probably most of us have parts of this at least memorized, don't we? And it's just not that easy to just trust in the Lord with all your heart, to lean not on your own understanding and in all your ways to acknowledge him. So, so maybe we can unpack this just a little bit. But I think the kind of the overarching message in this passage, and it's probably not an angle from which I've preached on it before, I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to tell me this, I can't do what this verse teaches you can't do what this verse teaches. Now you're saying, wait a minute, Pastor. You and I can't trust in the Lord with all our heart. We can't lean not on our own understanding. We can't in all our ways acknowledge him without the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay, are you, are you with me now? You know, we, we've been talking for quite a while this year about how we take our natural and we ask the Holy Spirit to bring his super and add it to that because it is so natural for us to be concerned about stuff in our life, concerned about stuff in other people's lives. Let, let's be honest, you know, a, a lot of the things that we worry about, it's not like selfish really worrying it's just, you know, I'm concerned about people that I love. How many of you are with me? Right? I mean, and I believe God sees our hearts. He knows that we love our friends and our families, our grandkids, our kids, our parents. You know, we love these people, and, and we get concerned when there's, there's a threat, there's something going on. But I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to help us develop that trust in the Lord. 
so that we can live in the favor and the blessings of God. Because I don't feel like I'm in favor and in blessing when I'm going through life worried about stuff. Right? You know, it's, it's not God's will for us to be worried. So, oh, pastor, if you knew my situation, you'd be worried too. Don't worry about your life, Jesus said. You are not the exception. There's not uh, any situation in your life that Jesus says, ooh, that is big. You better worry about that one. Uh, right? <laughs> you know, Jesus isn't going to change his mind because your situation seems exceptional. So the foundation of this whole thing, I believe, is having a confidence that God loves us and knows us. You know, if you're a little shaky on God's love, and if you're a little shaky on the fact that God really knows what's going on in my life, you're going to be a lot more prone to being worried, aren't you? But when I know in my heart of hearts, my God loves me, and I know that he knows what's going on in my life, it's a lot easier for me to step in pro into Proverbs 3, 4, and 5. So, with that said, and knowing that we need the Holy Spirit's help, let's talk about this. There's two parts. There's God's part, and I'm not too worried about God doing his part, okay? I'm worried about me doing my part. So my part, first of all, is to trust in the Lord. And, you know, trusting is like the exact opposite of worrying. Um, it's putting all of our confidence for the hope and our hopes for the past, the present, the future, the, the whole package, and just say, God, I choose to believe that you are working in my situation. God, I trust you. And yet so many times I feel like this little kid. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you've been to, to the, the, the city pool and there's, there's a, a mom, dad, grandpa, somebody in there trying to teach somebody to swim. And they're in the pool, right, and the water's all the way up to here, and the little kid's on the edge. And the grandpa's out there going, come on, I'll catch you. And you're like, they're making funny noises. Will you really catch me, grandpa? I'll catch you, jump in. And a you know, you're just like, oh, they're so torn. They want to trust Grandpa, but they are, they are scared to death. And so many times I, I see myself as that little kid. I'm sitting here giving myself a pep talk. You know, it's like, Jesus can handle this. Why do I feel like I have to give him counsel and, and you know, and explain the whole situation? And why is that? I want to be that guy that trusts in the Lord with all my heart. And, you know, I think a lot of the essence of why we're that little kid on the edge of the pool is because we're afraid that God isn't going to work it out the way we want it to be. God, if I could know that I could get the outcome that I want, then I'll trust you. But we've all been there, right, where we've, we've had God give us an outcome that is different than the thing that we prayed for, and we're like, oh, that didn't quite go the way I want to, and we really struggle with that. But, but trust has to step back and say that, uh, you know what, I believe that God is bigger than my circumstance. In fact, I'm going to, with the Holy Spirit's help, choose to let God choose. I just hope he does it the way I want him to. Right? You know, it's like, oh. But who has more experience? You or God? God's got a little bit more experience, doesn't he? You know, I've I've only had one life, and I've only had 63 years. God's worked with billions of people, 
and has had lots of opportunities to perfect, if God needed perfecting, how to work things out in people's lives. Isn't that right? So when the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, sometimes we have to give ourselves a pep talk. God, I know you are bigger than this. I know, God, you have an answer that's right, even if I can't quite see it. With all my heart, God, I am going to trust that you are committed to my well-being. Do, do you believe that? Do you believe that God really wants what's best for you? Okay. I believe that God wants what's best, and I believe that God's heart is good. And so I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. Uh, a passage that really helps me is uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 30. I think Steve's got that one for us. This is Jesus. Now, there's the verse I started out with. I tell you, Jesus says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns and let your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Say, somebody say amen. You are worth more than a sparrow. Hallelujah. In fact, he goes on and says, you're worth more than many sparrows, right? Can any one of you, by worrying, Add a single hour to your life. Now, that's a rhetorical question, but, you know, you can't, can you? You can't add a single hour. And, and why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin, and yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Ah. God clothes even those with little faith. I mean, you feel like you qualify for that. It's like, I, I, have, I have little faith, and that's okay. All you need is just a little faith, and God's going to take care of it. He's going to provide what we need if we will choose to trust in him. All right, now the second part for us is to lean not on our own understanding. In other words, don't try to figure it out. Okay, you got that? We'll go on to the next point. I mean, that's, that's the hard thing, isn't it? Trying, to, trying hard to, to figure it out. And I think a lot of it go, boils down to say, well, I want to be responsible. <laughs> you know, I don't want to just be la di da di da di da whatever. I got to be responsible on this. And, and God's like saying, you know, I, I, I'm okay with you being irresponsible because I've got this. You know, who did Jesus set up as kind of like the paragon, the epitome, the 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 exhibit a of what somebody who somebody is that enters the kingdom of god who who was that it was a little child wasn't it unless unless you become like a little child you'll in no ways inherit the kingdom of god now kids they can be irresponsible and jesus says i love that i love that you you, you know you you big people don't have to have all the answers to get grace you don't have to give God a suggestion list in order for him to pick the best one. He is going to take care of us. We've got Jesus' word on it. Even if it boils down to something like food and clothing, God is able to take care of that. So if God can handle those things, he can probably handle things that are even bigger. I have found that I am trying harder to invite the Holy Spirit into my problems. We're, we're, we're going through a little deal with our explorer right now, and uh, it's going to get worked on tomorrow. And it's like, 
Okay. Holy Spirit, that, that explorer belongs to you. And I need your help to know what to do to get this fixed. You know, it, it's a lot easier when you can be reminded that God owns everything. I'm just the manager, right? You know, I'm, now this is going to sound really small, but one of the things I've been kind of worried about lately is my gutters at my house that are still a mess from when I got my roof put on months ago. And my gutter guards are like flopping in the breeze and my gutters are filled with roofing debris. And it's like, okay, I really need my contractor to take care of that. And, and it's, I need to talk to myself because what I'm doing is I'm leaning on my own understanding here. What do I need to do? I've texted and I've made phone calls and yesterday I even got up on a ladder and did a little of my own work. Probably not the best thing to do, uh, but I'm trying. I'm just confessing my sins here. All right? It's like I, I am trying to be good and invite God in. God, you've got this. You know what needs to be done. Holy Spirit, you know what needs to happen with the Explorer. Holy Spirit, you, need, you know what needs to happen with my leg because my leg is still, still an issue. And it's like, I don't want to worry about it. Holy Spirit, you are my healer. I thank you for that healing. And I don't know how long it's going to take, and I don't know what you're going to do, and if there's something I need to do, show me. But I don't want to worry about it. Holy Spirit, come. You know, on this, this whole leaning not on our own understanding, sometimes I feel like if I've worried about something, then surely I must have prayed about it too. I mean, it kind of goes like this. Oh God, what am I going to do? <laughs> kind of starts there. And then I start thinking about all the, the options and all the things that I could do to make it happen. Oh God, this is a mess. So in my mind, I've, I've, like, I've talked to God about it, Right? I've told God it's a mess, and then I start trying to figure it out. But have we stopped and, and really prayed, God, I need wisdom. God, I need your involvement in this situation. And we've really had that heart-to-heart -heart with God about the thing rather than just kind of thinking about it and talking to God a little bit, but really we spend more time thinking about it than praying about it. I would challenge you that if you are concerned about something today, that before the day ends, that you and God get alone and you pour your heart out to him about what's going on. Invite the Holy Spirit to come into your situation. I mean, it's, it's tough. Kenny's in the hospital. I mean, it's, oh, Jesus, I am trying to invite you into that. I mean, it, it, sometimes it's a perpetual, it's an ongoing dialogue. And, you know, Jesus understands that. But as we try not to figure it out and just trust, I can do that a lot better when I know I've invited the Holy Spirit to come and help me. So, we trust in the Lord with all our heart. We lean not on our own understanding. And then lastly, in all our ways, we acknowledge him. Now, this isn't just like tipping your hat to Jesus. Have a good day, Jesus. I acknowledge you. It is, it is like bringing Jesus into everything. You know, Paul said something that's kind of hard to fathom. He said, pray with what? without ceasing. Now, who's got time to pray without ceasing? Well, Doug, I know you got a lot of spare time these days. It's like, you know, use some of that time to just pray without ceasing. It's like, well, ain't nobody got time for that, right? It's like, we got stuff to do. But I believe the challenge of that is as we acknowledge God in all our ways, we take opportunities to pray about everything we are doing as we go along. 
It's pray as you go. And we are good at going, aren't we? <laughs> Come on. But, you know, I, I never forget, Gail, was, she was leaving church, and Joel and I were leaving church. <laughs> and Joel and I were going to do it best. And Gail was going to go get a haircut. And so there we are in, in do it best, Joel and I, and I get a phone call. And it's Gail. And she's like, I'm, I'm hanging upside down in my truck. And I'm like, I thought you went to get a haircut. <laughs> Literally on a little jaunt less than a mile from here to getting a haircut, her pickup truck got flipped upside down by a little car and Gail is literally hanging by the seatbelt inside her pickup truck right there by John Davis's insurance agency. You know, that makes me think that there is no small trip. <laughs> I don't care what kind of trip you are going on, you could trip. And you really need to hear what Paul says about pray without ceasing. I think of that often, Gail, that's like, <laughs> probably more than I do. Um, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, yeah. But, you know, it's like, take nothing for granted. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Don't just think, I've got this. I've been to get a haircut a million times. You could end up upside down. Just saying. Assume nothing, take nothing for granted, but in all your ways acknowledge him. You know, we, we I mean, Marianne and I, we pray over the big trips, right? We're going to go on vacation and we, we'll hold hands and we'll pray, God, go before us and keep us safe. But probably we should pray before we go to Walmart and Savoy, <laughs> right? You know, I remember the Born Loser comic. You may, some of you may remember him and he's sitting there looking at the paper talking to his wife and he says, you know what? The new study says that most accidents happen within five miles of your house. Maybe we should move. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But the reality is, is that, you know, stuff happens when you don't think it's going to happen. You, you better just be prayed up all the time. Right? In all your ways, acknowledge him. Invite God into the trip in, to Walmart. Invite God in when you go to get the haircut. You're going to remember the haircut one, aren't you? Next time you go, you're going to think, yeah, Gail got flipped. Uh, you know, we, we better pray. You know, we think, oh, we'll let God handle the big stuff. Okay. Really? The God of the universe? How, how much of any of this is big stuff? Right? It's big to us. Because it's big to us, God cares. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. Now, another part of this is that, well, I'll tell my story. I love this story, so this is a good opportunity to tell it. So there's a couple construction workers, and they were eating lunch. Some of you remember the story. Don't spoil my punchline. So they're, they're sitting there. They're opening their lunch buckets, and they're pulling it out. And the one guy says to the other guy, he says, uh, oh, man, baloney again. And, and the other guy said to him, said, you know, why don't you just tell your wife to make you something other than baloney? And he's like, hey, I'll have you know I make my own sandwiches. And, and it's like, how much of the baloney in our life is of our own making? Right? You know, I mean, it's like, you know, if I hadn't said this or hadn't done that, then I wouldn't be in this mess. Right? You know, if I had prayed about this, then God would have told me, Darren, stop it. Don't do it. But I rushed on blew past the counsel of my wife, which I know is always dangerous, and I mean that in all seriousness, that, that, you know, in all your ways acknowledge him. That means you do what God says, and it'll save you a whole lot of baloney. Right? It'll save you a whole lot of baloney. And so that's, and it's the baloney that we worry about. Right? 
man, if I just hadn't made that bologna sandwich mess for myself, I would be a ha happy clam. But the fact is, I, I didn't do what God said. I, I stretched the truth. I, I embellished that application. Uh, you know, I stepped out of the lines of what was right. And now I'm worried that I'm going to get caught, found out. Well, if you had acknowledged the Lord in all your ways, you would have just been truthful to begin with. So, you know, there is always that. So, uh, we trust in the Lord with all our heart. We lean not on our own understanding. In all our ways, we acknowledge God. And I like Matthew 6, 33. Did I give you that one, Steve? Okay. Well, you guys know that one. But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. You know, if, if we can just trust God, everything's going to work out. It may not work out the way you want it to. So, what is God's part? Well, God's part is very simple. He's going to make our paths straight. And, you know, worrying is me trying to fix it. Trust is letting God fix the situation. But there, there's some things that, that kind of make it hard. We've all been disappointed with God before. I prayed. I really felt like I heard from God. I did this. It didn't go the way I wanted it to. And now I'm just having a little trouble, and I get that. But there's a couple reasons why I think we have a difficult time uh, really trusting God. And the first is that God is the catch-all drawer. How many of you have a catch-all drawer in your home? You know what a catch-all drawer is? Anything you don't know where to put, you just throw it in the drawer. It's like, Mary Ann, did you check the drawer? You know, it's like, because I, I don't know, that doesn't fit. Where do you put your whatchamajiggies? You know, well, you put them in the catch-all drawer. So if you need a whatchamajiggy, you look in the catch-all drawer, and there it is. And, and so I think that God is in some ways kind of like the catch-all drawer. You know what? I, that doesn't make sense. That didn't go well. That didn't work out. You know, God should have come through for me. And so we just throw all of the misfortunes kind of into the catch-all drawer, and, and it's like, well, you know, God didn't do that. I wonder why God didn't show up for this. Now, I don't know that we do the same thing. When the blessings come, we, we, we just, oh, well, that's cool. Instead of like, God, thank you. Thank you. you know? But we tend to blame God for stuff. So, and then the, the second reason is that um, we tend to operate in the short term. If it doesn't work out in the short term, it's not going to work out at all. That's kind of the way we think. I spent a miserable year in Springfield in 2004, 2005. And, and I hated it, except on Sundays when I'd come here and get to preach. And then it was fun. And then I'd go back to my little miserable life in Springfield. And I was like, you know, God is sure not hearing my prayers nothing's working out for me. And now I look back on that year as a year when God did a whole lot of adjustments. I went to the spiritual chiropractor. Things were popping and cracking and being adjusted, and uh, it, it was not pleasant. I didn't like it, but I'm so glad that God did it. God was totally in it, totally in it, even though I hated it in the short term. And I would say to you that if trusting God is difficult and you're not seeing what you want to see, remember that trusting God is a walk and it's a process. And the end of the story has not yet been told. There will come a time, I believe, if you truly continue with Jesus and don't give up, that you're going to see sense come to the nonsense. It's like, why did I have to go through that? 
I don't understand it. I don't like it. Maybe that's where you are right now. You're in a spot. It's like, I don't like it. I don't understand it. Trust God. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him. God will make your path straight. There's no way. There's no way. This, the, there is a way. Because God is the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way, right? God's bigger than you. He's bigger than the circumstances. He's able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we can ask or imagine. In fact, believe it or not, I have seen God do things better than I would have even wanted him to do. I would have settled for far less but God blessed bigger than I even would have asked for. And it's so cool that, that God loves us that much. So, yes, I understand being in a valley of disappointment. I get that. But I want to encourage you. You just trust in the Lord. You give him all your heart. Don't try to figure it out. Just one day at a time. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Trust him, trust him, trust him. Don't do anything stupid. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Because sometimes we get frustrated, we fall into stupid. Better be careful how I stand on one leg. But I, so, some of my worst life decisions have been made when I was angry. Right? So it's like, okay, just acknowledge him in all your ways, right? Don't go off into stupid. You do what's right, even though it's hard, even though you don't see any point to it, and you pray continually, and God will make your path straight. At the end, whenever that end gets here, you will see virtue in it. Now, there may still be some twinges of pain, but those, are, I think, are just reminders that God was at work in that situation. So, the take home today is this. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Can I just put a little time out in here to say that being grateful for what God has done in your past is a tremendous way to trust him more in the present. Especially if you want to rehearse some of the times that you thought there was no way out. And yet God brought you out. He gave you the job of your dreams. You got that house. You were healed. You had that friendship restored. You know, it was like, wow, okay, God, you did it before. You can do it again. Amen? Amen. We serve a big God. So give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. He does love you, and he is working to make your paths straight. Just continue to trust. Lean not and acknowledge him in all your ways. Now, I told you at the beginning that there's one group of people that should be very worried. Okay, so this is the exception to what Jesus taught. You say, whoa, wait a minute. We don't make exceptions to what Jesus taught. Jesus said, don't worry about your life. There's one person or a group of people that should be very worried, and that is the person who doesn't know Christ as their Lord and Savior. Because you are truly out there on your own. Now, God loves you. He has a plan for your life that's good. But if you shut him down, you are on your own. And bad things happen. So I want to say to, to those here, to those out there in Facebook land, in particular this morning, that if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are making the biggest mistake of your life. So many times people think, when I become a Christian, I have to give up this, and I have to give up that, and I can't do this, and I can't do that, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what? That stuff's stupid. <laughs> I mean, it's like, really? You'd, you'd, you'd miss Jesus for smoking? You'd miss Jesus for cussing? You'd miss Jesus for your music? You'd miss Jesus for a boyfriend? No, that's not very smart. You choose Jesus, and he'll take care of all the other stuff, right? There is nothing that you lay down for Jesus that is, that is 
more than compensated for knowing him, he pays us back with a rich, rich life. Amen? And? Okay. Living by myself in a tin box. That's what my son calls it. I pay my tithe, try to keep up on my bills. I try to help people when I can. I love being joyful around others. Sometimes not at home, but when I go out, I try to be joyful, encourage other people, do nice things for them. Okay, about six weeks ago, I got a phone call, and it said, you've won. And I thought, what have I won? They said, a furnace. I didn't know I had applied for a furnace, but I had won a furnace. And I said, well, that's good, because I need a furnace. My trailer was made in Texas, and all the appliances were installed there, okay? A furnace in Texas is not big enough to run in Illinois and our cold winters, and we've had a lot of cold weather. Okay, so the people came to put the furnace in, and they brought me a heat pump, not a furnace. Question mark, question mark. Is this right? Okay, this is a freebie. You don't ask too many questions, okay? They installed this, and a couple days later, they came back, and it wasn't running right. And they put in three gallons or containers of Freon, and it still wasn't running right. So we looked at, uh, we looked at this. They looked at the situation, and they decided maybe something was going on in the furnace inside the house. So they checked it over and they decided there needed to be some more work done. They pulled out the heating element and set it on the floor and then they went to the truck and they got a whole new furnace. The part that keeps it from the house, what it's in, in Words run away from you when you get to be 80 years old. Okay, this was the container that goes around the furnace. They set that in, and they put the coil in. They put the thermostat on the wall, and I looked at that thing, and I thought, I'll never make this. It is more computerized than my computer. And I thought, can't we do something about that? And they said, well, maybe. So they checked around, and they got me an easy thermostat. In the meantime, I have received a package that had light bulbs, um, shower heads, um, what are these uh, things that you plug into? Okay, a power, a power, mm -hmm. whatever it's called. And this one um, is made so when you turn your TV off, it turns the electricity off. Did you know when you turn your TV off, there's still electricity running through the wires and you're getting charged for it even though you're not watching TV? Well, this is one that will turn that off automatically. Very high tech. And I'm really into high tech, don't you know? <laughs> okay. So here I have a new furnace, a heat pump that's two and a half something or other. It's not gallons, it's T tons. tons, two and a half ton heat pump. Uh, I have new light bulbs all over my house. I have new shower head. I have this fabulous um, power cord. Uh, what else did they did give me? The new uh, thing on the wall, the thermostat, okay. Uh, then I got another call and they said, can we make an appointment to have your insulation put in? And I thought, oh my goodness, what are they going to do to my trailer? Insulation to me means on the outside of the building. 
I said, what are you gonna, how are you going to do that? And she said, well, it's uh, underneath. So they, came, they made an appointment, and they came and they checked all the registers and all the leads from one to another, and then they insulated underneath the house. And we had all kinds of stuff floating around. <laughs> Wow. But this has been a blessing that the Lord has sent me for yes. being diligent, paying my bills on time, not spending too much money, and, you know, putting up with what I have. My yeah. old car keeps running as long as I do Amen. the right things. Well, and blessed. I want to thank him for this. I just thank Jesus that he's kept me supplied Maybe not with food and clothes, but this is more important than <laughs> food and clothes. And I want to thank him. Amen. Amen. Our God is faithful. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, you know, everybody's biggest need is Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus today, he is standing ready to welcome you into his forever family. And, uh, you know, to how does a person come to Christ? You say, well, that's, that's got to be tricky. Nope, it's very simple. You admit that you're a sinner. You believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's as easy as ABC. And I'm going to ask everybody to stand with me. I don't, I don't know everybody in the house today. Most of you I do, but some I don't. So I just want to ask, is there anybody here that you say, you know what, I need Jesus. I need to make that commitment to Jesus today before I leave. Anybody out there in Facebook land? Anybody in the house today say, I need Jesus or need to recommit my life to Jesus. All right, for the sake of folks in Facebook, I want to pray. You can agree with me. If you want to receive Christ and you're out there watching this video today, right now, here's a prayer. Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I know I'm a sinner. I know I've messed up. I know I've missed the mark. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And now I confess you, Jesus, to be the Lord of my life. Amen. 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 So if you prayed that prayer, you don't have to worry. Heaven is your home. Amen. Then you need to re-listen to the rest of this sermon about how to live worry-free. So, hey, church, we're not going to worry, right? We are not going to worry. We're going to trust. We're going to lean not. We're going to acknowledge. And God's going to do his part. Amen. Let's worship one last song.
God, we just thank you for being a good, good Father, a loving Father who knows our hearts. Father, we are so sorry that we worry and that we have anxiety. 